Good morning or good evening again to uh, to our young teeny boppers in the, in the Harris County Precinct 1 District. We, I am Coach Hudson and I'm with uh, Perfect Team Play Chess Club, which is a 501c3 organization. We're here today to teach you fundamentals of chess. But before we go into that, we're going to um, give you four skills that it takes to be a good chess player. We call this concept TAPS. Stands for time, attention, patience, and strategy. Four skills that it takes to be a good chess player, but more importantly, four life skills that it takes to be successful, okay? So what I'm asking you to do for the next 30 minutes or more, or during the course of the class, you must pay attention, all right? You've gotta listen at what we're talking about so you can grasp the concept and become better at playing chess and better at making decisions in life. So we'll get, we'll go ahead and get started. Now we, uh, I would like to introduce to you a U.S. Chess Federation coach by the name of, I call him Dr. Paul. He's going to come in and he's going to go over some um, some different openings. Openings are how you begin the game, and you have to remember that you have three parts to the game: opening, middle, and ending. Uh, Coach Paul is going to come in and go over some openings. He's going to give you a couple of names of different openings. We were expecting for you to remember those names and try to remember or do your best to remember the movement of the pieces. So I am Coach Paul, U.S. Chess Federation coach. We're going to go over some common openings today and some general ideas you need to focus on in the opening. I'm going to remind you that um, the white pieces or light pieces always move first. In the opening, the board, in chess, the board is my battlefield. In the opening, we want to do a few things. We want to get our pawns to the center of the battlefield. We want to get our king safe. And we're going to get our pieces, our attacking pieces, our soldiers out onto the battlefield. So the most common opening, the two most common openings for white involve either moving this E, e pawn or the D pawn. When we start out with beginners, we always start with the E pawn. And we want to grab space in the center, so we move it two squares. We can say that is pawn to E4. Now my pawn's controlling two squares. It's controlling the F5 square, the D5 square. Now it's Black's turn, and there are several moves you can do, but many openings start with this, pawn to E5. We know the way the pawns move, that these two pawns are locked up. But white is controlling this square in the center, d5. And black is controlling this square in the center, d4. We call these four pawns, we call these four squares the sweet center. And then these squares around them are also considered part of the center. Now in chess, we really got to get our soldiers out and we want to get our king safe. Usually we're going to castle on the king side. So I'm going to move my knight out. And look what I do. Not only do I bring my knight out to f3, I immediately am attacking a pawn that has nobody defending it. So knight to f3 gets my knight out ready to attack. And it also actually attacks a pawn. Notice that's why I didn't play knight to h3. This knight is not in the center of the board and is not doing anything. That's also why I didn't play knight to e2 because it's kind of towards the center, but it's not making any threats. That's why, if you look at Grandmaster games, you're almost always going to see knight to f3 in this position. Now, Coach Hudson taught you about hanging pieces last time. Nobody wants to hang pieces in pawns. In chess, you don't want to give away stuff for free. That's how you lose games. So black's got to defend this pawn. This happens sometimes, but this pawn blocks in black's bishop. So black usually plays knight to c6. Now white's attacking my pawn, but I'm defending it. White's going to play smart. If on the next move, white captures this pawn, black will capture the knight, and white will have given up a three-point pawn, sorry, three-point knight for just this one-point pawn, leading to like minus two points.
but in the opening you usually don't want to move the same piece twice anyway because we're trying to get our soldiers out. When I work with beginners they'll get this knight out and then they'll start hopping it around. No, we need to get everyone else out too. The most common moves here are bishop to c4 and bishop to b5. For today, I'm going to play bishop to c4. My bishop is out. I put more pressure on this center square. So black's going to have a hard time using this square here at d5. Now, if my player who's got black knows the opening principles too, they're going to get their soldiers out as well. So they're not going to start hopping this knight around. They're going to keep it there because nobody's threatening him. And they're going to play knight to f6. So take a look. Now, white's pawn is under attack. What's white going to do? We try not to move the same piece twice. So we're not going to go back here. These guys are attackers. They're not defenders. You want LeBron James by the basket. You don't have him in the back. Right? These are your attackers. They don't belong back here defending. So I'm either going to push a pawn forward here, or I'm going to get an attacker out and also defend by playing knight to c3. This is called the four knights variation. Do you see I have all four knights out to their best squares? Black can get the bishop out. Either they can mirror white. Or we can also put it at bishop to d6. Let's do that. Now, as you can see, both players have a king, two spaces, and then the rook. So both players can now castle. In the opening, when your chess game first starts, your king is right in the center of the board. And we said the attacks happen and start in the center. So we need to get our king out of the center of the board. So white's going to castle. Remember in castling, the king moves two, even if it's on the other side, queen side castling. The king moves two, and the rook moves next door. Black will do the same. The king will move two, and the rook will move next door. I'm not going to play out the whole opening, um, but general plans are now going to be that white is going to move some pawns to get the bishop and queen out. Black is also going to get their bishop and queen out. The soldiers have to get out into the battle, and they have to either be in the center of the board, or they have to be somewhere nearby where they're attacking the center of the board. That's the main area of the battlefield. So let me reset the board, and we'll go over another one. One of my favorite openings to play for black is called the Scandinavian defense. We're going to make some moves that might be odd, but it's a solid defense. So in this opening, white plays pawn to e4. And in many openings, black plays pawn to e5, like I taught you. But in the Scandinavian defense, black actually plays pawn to d5. Now, we're not giving this away for free, because as you can see, the queen defends the pawn. So usually, white will play pawn takes at d5. And then black, who does not want to give a pawn for free, will play queen captures the pawn at d5. So now we're even. In chess, you want to get something, you like to gain something called tempo, which kind of means when you, you are making a threat to your opponent and they have to react. So there are a few ways to threaten this queen. But there's really only good one that you see, one good one that you see a lot of people play. They don't play this, because they would just lose a queen. They're not going to play queen to h5. Who's on d5? Queen was on d5. Oh, you're right, thank you. Right? The most common move here is to play knight to c3. This does all the things we talked about. 
it gets a soldier into the battle, it attacks the center of the board, and in this case, it's forcing black to react, because if this queen doesn't move on the next move, the knight can take it. The two most common moves now are queen to a5, or queen to d8. Now I told you you shouldn't move a piece twice in the opening usually, but if you're going to lose your queen, you got to move it somewhere. So queen to a5 or queen to d8. Now I remind, let, let me remind you, I told you to work in the center of the board. So the most common move for white here is pawn to d4. Black still wants to get these pieces out to castle. So often we will see knight to f6. And I'm going to go a little faster, but just a little bit. Knight to f3, also attacking the center of the board. Got to get this bishop out, so black's going to play pawn to e6. White will prepare to castle. Pawn to, sorry bishop, there are a few moves here. This one works, this one works. Let's play bishop to c4. Black will play, bishop to d6, white will castle, and black will castle. That's only one variation of the Scandinavian defense, and it's not the one I play every time, but it's solid. Both players have their pieces out and attacking the center. Both players have their king castle, and both players didn't move a piece twice unless they had to. Remember, black didn't want to lose that queen, so they moved it back to d8. Okay, now we're going to uh, go into a talk more about uh, giving you the fundamentals of the end game. Remember we talked about the uh, opening, we talked about the middle, now we're talking about the end game. And Dr. Paul, Coach Paul is going to come and share with you the concept of the end game. Please pay Attention. If you played really well during the opening and the middle game, and you have more pieces than your opponent, it's time to win the game and checkmate. But if you don't know how to use those pieces to checkmate, it doesn't matter how well you played for the rest of the, for the, rest of the game because you can't win. So we're going to go over the three basic checkmates, and the one we're going to start with is the king and two rooks. In this position, white cannot checkmate black because they only have a king, and you cannot checkmate with the king. Black can checkmate white because there's king and two rooks. Actually, if the board looked like this, you could still checkmate. It's harder. This one is much easier, which is why we try to keep our pieces on the board. In this position, it's black to move. This position is called the rook roller or the lawn mower. We're going to use our rook as a team to checkmate the king. And actually, this king, our black king, doesn't have to do anything. Okay, well, what was it called? It was called the, the lawnmower or the... Or the rook roller. Or the rook roller. You have to remember, or it's good to remember, the name of, of the sequences that he's going over with you, okay? In any of these checkmates, we want to get the king to the edge of the board or the corner where he cannot escape. So, right now the white king has all of these squares a lot of squares. We're just going to cut them off until he has no more squares. I'm going to start with rook to h5. Now the king has to stay on the first four ranks but cannot go up. Now what the king's going to do is going to try to chase these rooks but as you're going to see the king is too slow. The white side let's say they're smart and they know that this rook's coming to a4 next. So they come down here they try to chase it. A smart opponent is going to use all the squares that you give them. Now when I see beginners try to learn this checkmate, they get the same rook and they move here, but it actually just lets the king back to the center. We want to get the king to the edge, so we're going to keep this rook here, and we're going to play our other rook, rook to a4. Now the king cannot go back up to the fifth rank, and he cannot stay on the fourth rank. These rooks are rolling him down the board or to the side of the board, or up to the top of the board, but the point is they're rolling him to the edge. Now the player with white is smart, 
So they're going to try to take this rook by going to b3. Now if I just play the roller normally, I'd play rook to h3, but the king would take my rook here at a4. So what black's going to do is they're going to move this rook to the other side. But watch this. If I go here, rook to h4, I block my buddy. So I'm going to go rook to g4, like this. That way I can roll down with my other rook on the next move. Look at how slow this king is. White is going to play king to c3, but it's not fast enough. Now we don't want to let this king back up here, so we're going to play rook to h3. Check. The fourth rank is closed, the third rank is closed, so the white king moves to the second rank. We're going to keep the third rank closed and move the rook down. Play rook to g2 check. Now the king is stuck on the bottom row. It's time to checkmate. We're going to keep this rook here on the second rank and close off the first rank by playing rook to h1 checkmate. In a checkmate, if it's checkmate, that means the king can't move out of check. The king cannot block the check with another piece and the king cannot capture the piece making checkmate. We see that the rook that's making check is too far from the king, so we can't take it. We see that there's no piece to block the rook, so we can't block it. And we see that the king can't move out of check because this, because d1 and f1 are attacked by the black rook, and d2, e2, and f2 are attacked by this black rook. So this is a checkmate position, and black would win the game. Okay, as you can see, Dr. Paul just finished the demonstration on how you can checkmate with uh, the king and the two rooks, okay? You can also checkmate with queen and rook. You can checkmate with, um, with uh, bishop and rook. You can checkmate with um, knight and queen. You can even checkmate with king and pawns, rook and pawns, queen and pawns. It just depends on the position of your pieces. But the end game is where you win or you lose. Victory or defeat. Okay? And so now you should understand the fundamentals of chess when it comes to the opening game, the middle game, and the end game. Remember the principle in the middle game in the opening game. You want to attack center. Develop on the queen side, protect king by castling. Attack center, develop on the queen side, protect king by castling. Okay? In your middle game, and I always condense it, Dr. Paul, in your middle game, you fighting. You're exchanging pieces. And that's where the value of the pieces come in at. You don't want to see where you can take the knight that's on F3 and capture the pawn on E5 and then the knight captures your knight on e5 that comes from c6 okay so um, you must remember the value of the pieces and know how to trade and it's in, in one of our sessions coming up we're gonna we're gonna equate chess to the stock market and knowing how to trade we're gonna start labeling those pieces as money you don't want to say, okay, I got three and I'm, I'm going to take one and then I'm going to lose my three. My three dollars. You don't have any, you lose your money that way. So, um, what are we talking about? Middle game. Then we go to the end game. You know the principles of the end game. You're trying to what, Dr. Paul? You're trying to win checkmate. the game. You're trying to checkmate. Okay? Those are your principles. You want to add anything, Dr. Paul? No, sir, just look for more end games and more strategies as we uh, continue on with this series.